10 years, 48 states, hundreds of dental professionals, thousands of questions, and they all really boil down to the same thing. We need to change, and how fast can you get us there? Often, team members and practice owners come to me and say, I'm tired. I need my team to level up where I am. Team members, do you crave a culture of joy and inspiration and growth? There are two keys to change and how fast you can get there. Allow me to tell you a story on how I discovered these keys. Way back in 1991, when I graduated from hygiene school, I worked for my dad. Our office was called Excellence in Dentistry, and he demanded it. The first day I got my license, he said, don't hurt my patients. <laughs> and he's six feet three inches tall, and at the time about 300 pounds. So I knew this was important to him. Well, one day, like many of you, I experienced a very negative patient, downright rude, actually. She had areas of cervical decay, and so I got on my soapbox, and I thought, I can help you with that. <laughs> and I started talking to her about fluoride and home care instructions. And all I was met was, with was, fluoride's poison. And your profession is a farce. And on and on and on. Now, I grew up going to practice management consultants over the years. I had some verbal skills. And I was going to put this round peg in this square hole, and I was going to win her over. It didn't happen. I finally gave up and went silent and hurried and finished that cleaning as fast as possible. And I went out to the hall and tried to compose myself, and I thought, I've got to give my dad a heads up on what's going on in that room. And I was feeling angry and disappointed. And I was mad at myself for not taking care of the customer. Because the customer's always right, right? Well, I debriefed my dad. I was physically shaking. My voice was shaking. My hands were shaking. I think steam was coming out of my ears. And maybe some liquid in my eyes. And he looked at me and nodded. And he walked to the hygiene operatory, and I followed. And he said to the patient, how are you doing today? And she said right back to him, I'm fine, but your hygienist is a bitch. Unquote. I wanted to crawl under a rock and die. In that moment, my dad, rest in peace, said to the patient, you're dismissed from my practice. Goodbye. And he walked out of the operatory, and I just went, what just happened? <laughs> oh, my goodness. In that moment, I was loyal to him forever. <laughs> now, you, think, you might think because we were blood, I, we were already loyal to your children. But I'm telling you, I just got out of hygiene school. I was cocky. I thought I knew everything. And bless his heart, he'd already built a successful practice without me. And he was patiently waiting for me to catch up. And he allowed me to do it. Because he trusted me in that moment, I wanted to be better. I wanted to be an economic force in the practice. My production improved. My case acceptance improved. I wanted to be a better person, and I wanted to understand our patients better. He knew a principle that Richard Branson from Virgin Group has taught. Customers don't come first. Employees come first. 
When you take care of your employees, they will take care of the patients for you. This is not a new concept. There have been so many books written about trust over the years. A family friend, neighbor, and patient of mine wrote a little book called The Speed of Trust. His name is Stephen M. R. Covey, and he said this, trust is not a soft social virtue. It's a hard economic driver for every organization. Harvey McKay said, employee loyalty begins with the employer. My dad knew that as well. When practice owners come to me and say, oh, the teams aren't trustworthy, I can't trust them. Find actionable ways to show trust in them first. The buck stops with you. Start with you. Number one key to improving your practice fast, connect with your employees and trust them. A verbal action of showing trust is your first key. Your second key is measure your performance. You can measure trust. You can measure lots of things. But measure your, in, measure your performance. This is based on, a, it's got a name. A psychological study says humans wrongly overestimate their performance, knowledge, and ability. We all do it. We need to objectify what's going on in our practices and how we're doing things so we know how to course correct when needed. Let me tell you another story of how I learned this. And I could tell you hundreds of stories, and you could tell me stories. I was in Michigan with a client. We, I observed them, seen their patients, looked for opportunities for change. And the next day, we sat down, and we were talking prevention, an easy sell we all believe in. And I said, Doc, hygienist, how do you believe about, what do you, what do you think about sealants? How, what are your feelings on sealants? And they said, oh, we love them. We do a ton of them. It's a great service. I had pulled a report in 12 months. They had done six. <laughs> six. <laughs> We've all done it. It happens over and over again. Whether we're talking about perio or anything else we believe in, we need to see reality. When we pull the data and measure our performance, we objectively identify challenges and we can course correct. Edward Deming, one of my favorite total quali quality management gurus, said, in God we trust, all others must bring data. <laughs> I love that. I can't do my job without the data. But if you're all about the data, you're just a jerk. You're just a jerk. But if you're only about trust, it's going to take you a lot longer to get where you want to go to arrive at your destination, whatever that means to you. Navy SEALs know they need to trust each other and perform. And if one thing is non-negotiable between performance and trust, it's performance. They'll forgive each other for performance, but you have to trust one another. Don't compromise. Cultures in high performance and high trust is a win for the patients, a win for the owner, a win for the team. Your team will be innovated for you. It'll be a better, provide, a better environment for all of you. And guess what? You will be profitable. Two keys, measure performance, create a culture of trust. Thank you.